Good morning. Good morning. Welcome in the name of Jesus Christ on this beautiful, beautiful December morning. On this, the fourth Sunday of Advent. As COVID transmission rates continue to soar in our area, we are asking that everyone remain masked during worship um, at all times. I will take my mask off uh, when I'm reading and, and preaching, just so you can hear me better. Uh, but uh, just out of an abundance of caution, we do ask that you remain masked at all times while you're upstairs here. Thank you in advance for keeping our worship as safe and comfortable for as many of us as possible. We thank Marin Tirabasi once again for providing us with the beautiful Advent uh, wreath lighting liturgy that we will be sharing later on. And um, thank Alan Robinson for uh, multitasking today. He came in early and did some shoveling. He is our camera and sound guy and um, he's our liturgist and he and Melissa will be lighting the Advent wreath later on during our worship service. So thank you. Thank you all. It, it takes all of us to do this. We, none, of us, none of us can do it to get by ourselves. At 4 o'clock this afternoon, we will gather out front um, and uh, do some Christmas caroling right here in the neighborhood. And uh, we invite you to come down for that. Uh, we have some, uh, some gifts that we'll be bringing, bringing around to our, to our friends in the neighborhood. We have some poinsettias that we'll be um, giving away and, um, and a few of uh, Marin Tirabasi's books. Um, so um, anybody who's really good at wrapping things, uh, if you wanna come downstairs um, in the vestry after worship, uh, we can wrap up a few of those books. We will not be having in-person worship on Christmas Eve. Uh, we are disappointed about that as well, uh, but we just felt like this was the uh, wisest and safest thing to do at this point. Um, we will have the sanctuary open for a time of uh, quiet reflection. There will be some music playing. We'll be able to light candles um, and uh, just enjoy the space here at Second Christian um, on Friday afternoon from 4 to 6. And then we will be on Facebook Live uh, from the pastor's porch at Parsons Gulch at 8 o'clock. The upshot of not having Christmas Eve services here is that these beautiful poinsettias will need a home for Christmas. Um, so uh, if, you, if you purchased one today and, um, or dedicated one, please take it with you. If you have not uh, dedicated one, Please take one with you, take it home. Um, these, these all need homes for the holidays. Assuming things don't um, spiral out of control between now and, and then, we will be gathering here next Sunday, um, December 26th, and we'll sort of do Christmas Eve on, on that Sunday morning. We'll do lessons and carols and sing all of the songs that you weren't able to sing together. So. We'll see you then for sure. Are there other announcements that I should share now? Let us continue in our worship.
The call to community is printed in our bulletins. Let us, res uh, let us read responsibly. And wombed one, dependent one, triumphant one, mighty one, toppling expectations one, magnified one, satisfying with justice one. We are hungry for you. Fill us with your good things. Our opening hymn is number 142, People Look East. John the Baptist called people to repentance, to prepare them for the coming of God's reign. Let us too repent that we might be ready for the God who comes to us. O oh God, restore us, show us your true face and save us. We make enemies of the weak and poor and leave them to fend for themselves. You were poor. Show us your true face and save us. As a country, we have not kept up. We are rightly mocked for our outlandish disparities. You knew how it was to be treated less than. Show us your true face and save us. We are caught in a cycle, not understanding mercy. Even our prayers can be vengeful. You taught us to pray. Show us your true face and save us. God says, remember these things, O Israel, you are my servant. You will not be forgotten by me. Turn around. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. I say to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God.
Today we will light four candles and we will be willing to light every taper in our lives. For love asks for all that is needed and then for everything else. For this is how incarnation happens, how God comes. We light four candles or a hundred or a thousand more, whatever it takes, to remind ourselves to live in love. As ordinary and gentle as the holy welcome that turns the world upside down comes hope, peace, joy, and love to illuminate our advent. Let us read together the words of Howard Thurman. I will light candles this Christmas, candles of joy despite all the sadness, candles of hope where despair keeps watch, candles of courage for fears ever present, candles of peace for tempest-tossed days, candles of grace to ease heavy burdens, candles of love to inspire all my living, candles that will burn all year long. Our first scripture lesson is taken from the book of the prophet Micah, chapter 5, verses 2 through 5. Let us listen for the word of God. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, 
whose origin is from old days, from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. Let us listen also for the word of God as it comes to us in the gospel according to Luke. In the first chapter, beginning at verse 39. And since we're turning it upside down today, I thought I'd read these words to you from Richard Swanson's translation, Provoking the Gospel of Luke. Mariam that's Mary, Mariam got up. In those days she went into the hill country, went quickly, went into a city of Judah. She went into the house of Zechariah. She greeted Elizabeth. It happened as she heard the greeting of Mariam, as Elizabeth heard it, it jumped, the baby in her belly. She was full of holy breath, Elizabeth was. She shouted with a great shriek. She said, blessed are you among women. Blessed the fruit of your belly. How to me is this? She should come. The mother of my Lord, come to me. For look, when it happened, the sound of your greeting into my ears, it leaped in exceedingly great joy, the baby in my belly. Godlike in happiness, she who was faithful, there will be a completion to those things spoken to her from God. And Mariam said, it extols, my life does. It rejoices, my breath does, at God my deliverer. Because God looked on the humility of his female slave. For look, from now on they will call me God-like in happiness, all generations, because he has done to me great things the capable one has. Holy is his name. His mercy extends into birthings and birthings of those reverencing him. He made strength with his arm. He scattered those visibly superior by the intentions of their hearts. He put down the capable from their thrones and exalted the humble ones. Hungry ones he filled full of worthy things. Rich ones out and away he sent them empty. He claimed Israel, his child, reminding himself of his deeds of mercy, just as he spoke to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants into the eon. Here ends the reading of the lesson. May God bless our reading, hearing, and understanding of these words. There have been a lot of moving parts during Advent this year. But by now, I'm sure you've noticed one thing in particular, something different from all the other years. Anyone? You may have especially noticed it if you gathered up here to light the Advent wreath. Our Advent wreath this year is repurposed. 
I think it was three years ago, I'm pretty sure it was three years ago, that Marin Tarabasi wrote a liturgy for candle lighting, and that was the year of the wildfires in California, which is a less specific time frame than it used to be. But it was three years ago, I think, 2018. And for that liturgy, we got these bowls that I painted. That was my advent craft that year. Three blue and one pink. And during the liturgy, since fire had caused such terrible devastation in the West that year, instead of lighting a candle, we poured water into the bowl. Do you remember that? That was beautiful. Each week, clear, cold, fresh water was poured into one of those bowls. It was beautiful, it was poignant, and it was perfect for that time together in our lives. I ordered regular Advent candles for our beautiful brass Advent candle holder. Maybe a little later than I had hoped. It wasn't really too late, at the time anyway. They always came like the next day. They ship them from the factory in Pittsfield, Maine. They're always here the next day. He promised me that they would be here by the end of the week. That was a Tuesday. Friday came. No candles. Monday came. No candles. Tuesday, Wednesday came. No candles. Thursday was Thanksgiving. I started getting nervous then. Friday came and there were no candles. So I knew I had to make other plans. So I looked in the cupboard here in the church where we keep the ideas, the other plans. And I found the partially burned candles from last year. It was actually two years ago. But after I set them up, I really didn't like the look of the dripping wax on different candles. I tried cutting them off a little bit, but that didn't look good either. So I went back into the cupboard where we keep the other ideas, the other plans. And in the back of that cupboard where we keep the other plans, I found these bowls and I thought, this will be perfect. We even had some floating candles from another liturgy that we did one, one Christmas. And I said, this is just going to be perfect. I set them up, but the wicks on the floating candles were too narrow, too, too short. And I was afraid that if we lit them, that we'd stick them down into the water and they'd get snuffed out. That wasn't going to work. And then I looked back in the cupboard where we keep the other plans and I found these beautiful pillar candles. Barely used, probably from another advent in years past. And I set them up and put them in the bowls and they were still too low. It just didn't look right. I mean, there were bowls holding a candle and there's nothing else in there and it just... And then a light went off and I turned the bowl upside down. And I put the candles on top. And that is the masterpiece that you have before you today. With a little bit of pride, 
I was telling Marin how we had repurposed the bowls from three years ago for Advent this year. And she recognized what I had not. How apropos, she said, to turn things upside down. If not for every Advent, then certainly for this one. Truly, COVID has already and continues to turn things upside down. And today we heard from Micah and Mary, and they are doing it too. I'm sure that many of us grew up with this image of Mary as a gentle young woman, docile, obedient. You know the song, Mary, meek and mild. In the church I grew up in, Mary appeared once a year, I think, and it was during the Christmas pageant, and she had no lines. And I'm pretty sure that I never really paid attention to the words that Mary sang to us today, the Magnificat. At, not, at least not after the first lines of obedience and praise to God's favor. Maybe it was because it was a little too Catholic for the mainline Protestant church that I grew up in. Or maybe it was because I heard the word sung in Latin and had no idea what it meant. But if you really listen to the words, Mary is not being at all docile or obedient or meek or mild. And if you listen to the words, you start to hear how truly radical and revolutionary, how tremendously countercultural Mary's message is. I may have shared these quotes with you before, but lest we forget. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, a German pastor and theologian who was executed by the Nazis in 1945, two weeks before the concentration camp that he was in was liberated. Dietrich Bonhoeffer called the Magnificat the most passionate, the wildest, one might even say the most revolutionary hymn ever sung. Our friend Richard Swanson, who we read from this morning, says that Mary is a resistor. We've heard that word lately, right? Mary is a resistor, a woman energized by her faith and the faith of her grandmothers to insist, to insist on the fulfillment of God's promises, to demand the justice promised by life in God's creation. She must not be remade as a docile dishrag of a woman, he writes. She is not that. She would not stand for it. This one you may remember. More colorfully, Roger Wolsey Another theologian says Mary is a punk. Her name, as we heard this morning, is actually Mariam, which translates to their rebellion. Their rebellion. These are his words, not mine. Knocked up, teenaged, and yet not yet married, Mary was the first punk singer and the first rock and roller. When she learned that she would bear the Christ child, she sang a song 
And it was a song of praise. It was a song of protest. And it wasn't timid. It was raucous. It was earth shaking. And Mary was singing about something that hadn't actually happened yet, right? Something maybe we're still waiting for today. And she knows that the birth of this child will inaugurate a new age, set something new in motion, that something different will come. But we're not hearing that future tense, hope-filled, forward-thinking language about what God will do. Did you notice? Mary's song is all past tense. She's saying that God's work is already accomplished, that it's already happened, that it's a done deal. God has scattered the proud. God has put down the powerful and exalted the humble. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. Mary tells us today that the long-awaited fulfillment of the promises of God God's justice-making, mountain-leveling, valley-lifting, world-reconciling promises. Those promises foretold by prophets for generation upon generation are not out there in the future. That they've already been fulfilled in something that hasn't even happened yet. In that tiny baby growing in her womb. Today, Mary reminds us that God is already at work. And that game-changing, creation-renewing, world right-side-upping event that we've been waiting for has already taken place. It happens right here. But we don't always recognize it because we see all that stuff going on around us and we miss it because it's just not what we're expecting. So I think we have to stop looking out there. Everything is different. Everything is already different. God's love reigns. And it's up to us to announce it. It's up to us to live it. The song that we're supposed to be singing is the one that will turn the world right side up. And we're called to sing it at border walls and homeless shelters and boardrooms, in courtyards and courtrooms, in community suppers and legislatures and caroling out in the streets. We're called to sing it in our homes and places of labor and leisure. We are called to sing it because it has already happened, my friends. The regular Advent candles did arrive. It was about a week late. But at that point, I didn't want to go back. You've heard me say that before, right? I don't want to go back. 
So those candles will be here for us for next year, maybe the year after. Because after all, friends, you've already turned it upside down. Amen. As we gather before God in prayer, I invite you, as always, to lift up names and situations that should be in our prayers today and through this week. Carol and Colleen. Kareen. Family of Cindy Tonkin. struggling with, with uh, depression this season for sure, yes. So. My granddaughter Erica and her husband is 30 years in COVID. Keep Erica and the family. Yes. Debbie Day passed away at 89 days. Debbie Day. And all the fun that goes with that. <laughs> At the family of Eric Sherry. Eric Sherry. Tom. Celebration uh, of my parents' uh, 68 wedding anniversary is actually today. Um, and so, so I'm sure the people gathered at their place yesterday, but uh, a clear celebration for their uh, love for each other. And then for uh, prayers for my father as he uh, has some more testing time uh, this week. I'm going to share beautiful words um, by uh, Mary Ludy, who's a professor of mine at Andover Newton and um, a gifted writer. Let us pray. Most gracious God, desire of every living thing, you have lighted our way in Advent, candle by candle, dispelling our gloom, and now four candles shine. The night is almost over, the day is almost here, but not yet. Promise by promise, you have cleared our sight with words from afar, dreams, signs, and wonders. And now the word made flesh is almost appearing, but not yet. Grace by grace, you have kept us awake, brightening our eyes of faith. And now we watch 
only a little more. Now on tiptoe we see the one we waited for is almost here, but not yet. At the end of Advent in these days of not quite yet, look with compassion on the joy, on the pain of the joyless, the grief of the childless, the sorrow of the bereaved. For not all people enjoy the season, not every family embraces, not every womb conceives and carries, not every day dawns with the presence of those we love. Not every story is full of angels, not every song is glory. Today we pray especially for all those who are struggling with depression in this season, those who are dealing with new cancer diagnoses, those who have lost loved ones, family and friends of Eric Sherry, Cindy Tonkin, and Debbie Day. We pray for Bill and Carol, for Kareen, Natalie, Marilyn, Hilda, Karen, for Erica and her family, for all those whose lives have been turned upside down by COVID, for our health care workers. We rejoice for new homes and anniversaries, family gatherings and celebrations. As we tell again the story of your coming among us, bind our hearts to the anguish of the poor, the suffering of the sick, the misery of the imprisoned, and keep us alive to the terrors of war, too easily forgotten, too easily accepted. Increase the joy of earth and help us relish with thankful hearts every good thing that will be ours this Christmas. Every pleasure and taste, every sound and sight, every touch, every memory, so that in the delight of our bodies and the thoughts of our minds, we will know and love you. You who visits us through every sense and pore. More than anything, O oh God, we ask for Christ to meet his love, to know his goodness, to experience his power, to be attracted to his way. We ask for Christ to make the difference, to anchor our hearts, to lead the way, to bring us home. We ask for Christ, for cradle and cross, for lullaby and lament, for life and death, and life made new in him. In hope we pray, the spirit of Christmas leaping within us, heartened by his almost visitation, the words he taught us on our lips that we are bold, bold to pray. To pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.
come now to the time in our worship when we are invited to respond with a financial offering. For those of you who are gathered in person here today and you have a gift to give, we ask you to leave it in one of the plates on the table as you leave. If you'd like to make a gift to the Christmas fund, we'll be collecting that through next month. So if you forgot to bring your, your gift today, there is still plenty of time to make those offerings. If you're worshiping with us online and would like to make a gift to Second Christian Church, we invite you to visit our website and make a safe and secure gift online. But that is not the only gifts that we are called to give this season. We are called to give of ourselves. And I invite you, as Mike offers his gift of music today, to discern in your heart what it is, what the gift is that you can bring this Christmas. Let us worship God with our tithes and our offerings and all of our gifts. Let us bless our gifts. Emmanuel, God with us, take these gifts and with us create a new world. Where we allow the them to become the us, the those to become the us, the really to become the really us. We are one body and always must be. Amen. Our closing hymn is printed in your bulletin. It's out of the archives. We sang this a few years back. Um, Mike is going to give us a little breathing room between verse 2 and verse 3. Um, this one moves right along, um, so try to keep up.
now, Holy One, go with us wherever you may lead us. Guide us through the wilderness, protect us from the storm, bring us home rejoicing at the wonders you have shown us, bring us home rejoicing once again unto our doors. Amen.